ग्रंथ राय श्रीमद भागवत हाम की बोलो श्री श्री कृष्ण बलदाव की जाए गौ प्रेमानंदी और ग्लोरी स्थिति समुद्र बोले और ग्लोरी स्थिति समुद्र बोले और ग्लोरी स्थिति समुद्र बोले और ग्लोरी स्थिति श्री गुरु एंड गोरंग और ग्लोरी स्थिति यू श्री प्रभु का नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय So reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, third canto. Seems like everybody in this part of the world is on third canto. In New Zealand, everywhere we went, they're on third canto. Here, everywhere we've been, they're on third canto. So we're on third canto, uh, chapter five, verse number five. Huh? Vidura's talks with Maitreya. Karoti karma nikrita vataro. Karoti karma nikrita vataro. Yanyat matantro bhagavam striadisha. Yatasa sarjagra idam niriha. Yatasa sarjagra idam niriha. Samstap evritim jagato vidate. Karoti does them. Karmani transcendental activities. Krita by accepting. Avatara incarnations. Yani all those. Atmatantra self independence. Bhagavan. The personality of Godhead. Priya Dishaha. The Lord of the Three Worlds. Yata. As much as. Sasarja. Created. Agri. At first. Idam. This cosmic manifestation. Niriha. Although desireless. Samstapya by establishing the team means of livelihood Jagata of the universe Vidatte as he regulates. Translation O great sage, kindly narrate how the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the independent, desireless Lord of the three worlds and the controller of all energies, accepts incarnations and creates the cosmic manifestation with perfectly arranged regulative principles for its maintenance. Translation, please repeat. O oh, great sage, oh, great. kindly narrate how the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the independent, desireless Lord, of the three worlds and the controller of all energies accepts incarnations and creates the cosmic manifestation with perfectly arranged regulative principles for its maintenance. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Sri La Prabhupada. Lord Krishna is the original personality of Godhead from whom the three creative incarnations, namely the Purush avatars, Karna, uh, Kar Karnavana Shai Vishnu, Garbodakshai Vishnu, 
ensure Dakshay Vishnu, expand. The whole material creation is conducted by these three Purushas uh, in successive stages under the external energy of the Lord. And thus material nature is controlled by Him. Thinking material nature to be independent is like seeking milk from the nipple-like bags on the neck of a goat. The Lord is independent and desireless. He does not create the material world for his own satisfaction as we create our household affairs to fulfill our material desires. Actually, the material world is created for the illusory enjoyment of the conditioned souls who have been against the transcendental service of the Lord since time immemorial. But the material universes are full in themselves. There is no scarcity for maintenance in the material world. Because of their poor fund of knowledge, the materialists are disturbed when there is an apparent increase in population of the earth. Whenever there is a living being on the earth, however, his substance is immediately arranged by the Lord. The other species of living entities, who far outnumber human society, are never disturbed for maintenance. They are never seen dying of starvation. It is only human society that is disturbed about the food situation, and to cover up the real fact of administrative mismanagement, uh, takes shelter in the plea that the population is excessively increasing. If there's any scarcity in the world, it is the scarcity of God consciousness. Otherwise, by the grace of the Lord, there's no scarcity of anything. Kuroti karma nikritavataro yanyatma tantro bhagavam striadisha yata sasarjagra idam nirya samstap yavrittim jagato vidatte. O great sage, Kindly narrate how the Supreme Personality Godhead, who is the independent, desireless Lord of the three worlds and the controller of all energies, accepts incarnations and creates the causing manifestation with perfectly arranged regulated principles for its maintenance. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militam Jena Tasmai Sri Gurave Nama Sri Chaitanya Manubhistam Tapitam Jena Bhutale Sayam Rupa Kadamayam Vidati Svapadandigam Adadana Stranandan Tairitam Yeche Puna Puna Sri Madhrupa Padam Bhujo Dhulisyam Janma Janmani Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhaktarin Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Panchakalpa Trubhyas Chakri Pasindu Vaibhacha Patitanam Pavani Vyo so here uh, we see Bidura is at, uh, approaching Maitreya Muni. As first he approached Uddhav, but Uddhav was feeling too sad in the separation of the Lord. His Lord had just wound up his pastimes on the earth. So he recommended him to go to Maitreya. So he went to Hardwar. Uh, that is the uh, door of Hari. Hmm? Uh, many people, they like to go to Hardwar, but that's just the door. Vrindavan is a gar. Gar means home. <laughs> so we're living in the home. <laughs> but Hardwar is also a very special place where, where the Ganga first comes on to the plains. Uh, very special place. Hmm. And there, Maitreya Muni was sitting, meditating on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And we see here Vidura, first he offers so many praises uh, to Maitreya Muni. Hmm. Huh? And then he asks him to begin narrating different pastimes. Here he's talking about the creation and maintenance of the material world. This is all from uh, uh, third canto. I mean, excuse me, first canto, excuse me. And... Uh, 
he says, please explain how everything is uh, created and uh, how uh, uh, sustenance of the living entities is arranged. Please explain everything. And we'll see he goes on explaining about the different incarnations and their activities for the welfare of the living beings. And, uh, he, he said, I never, at the end, he said, I never uh, satisfied hearing about the Lord. Uh, so please narrate all these things. Hmm? So first he narrates how this creation, uh, or Prabhupada explains here, first this creation begins from the Purush avatars. Hmm? We know that there, that first, uh, uh, Lord expands as uh, Balaram, hmm, as his first expansion. Then there's quadruple expansion, uh, Aniruddha, Pradumna, uh, Basudev, and who am I missing? Sankarshan. And then they expand again to another quadruple, and from that Sankarshan expands uh, Karnadakshaya Vishnu. Prabhupada says somewhere in this material world, excuse me, in the spiritual world, there's a little cloud. Hmm? Uh, and it's described in Brahma Samhita that this cloud is only one fourth of the uh, energy of the Lord. Hmm? And the spiritual world is uh, uh, tripod, it's the three fourths energy. How we take three-fourths and one-fourth of infinity, I don't know, but anyway, it's described like that just to give us some idea. Hmm? So there's a cloud in the spiritual sky. Hmm? And within that cloud appears the uh, Karnajal, the causal ocean. Hmm? And so uh, Karnadakshay Vishnu, he lied down in that causal ocean. Hmm. And then from his pores come so many millions and millions of universes. Hmm. We're thinking that we're just the only uh, universe in existence. We don't know how totally insignificant we are. Uh, we're thinking ourselves very, very important and, you know, very, uh, that I'm, uh, you know, uh, I'm the mayor of this city, this great big city of, of of Bridgman or uh, Gold Coast, I'm the mayor, somebody else is thinking I'm the governor or the chief minister, whatever you call him. Uh, somebody else is thinking I'm the uh, president of the whole country. And then there's so many countries, there's so many presidents. Uh, and this is just one tiny little universe. There's millions of other universes. Hmm? Unlimited number of other universes. Hmm? Uh, so within each universe, just to show you, then that Karnadakshay Vishnu, he uh, expands as Garbhodakshay Vishnu. Uh, he lies down in the Garbhodak ocean. Mm. And he, uh, uh, and gradually from his navel uh, grows a lotus flower on top of which Lord Brahma. Mm. Uh, and we see in the 10th canto that actually there's more than one Brahma because all the different universes are uh, uh, have have one have had Brahma, just like one time we read how Lord Brahma he went to Dwarka, and he told the doorman to tell Lord Krishna that Brahma has come to see him, and Krishna sent the doorman back to ask him which Brahma. Hmm? He said the one with four heads who created this universe, you know. So then the doorman let him in, uh, and. He finished his business, whatever it was, and then he asked Krishna, I'm got some doubt. You asked which Brahma? Are there other Brahmas besides me? Huh? And then suddenly Krishna called and hundreds and hundreds of Brahmas appeared, some with ten heads, some with hundred heads, some with thousand heads, some with ten thousand heads, hundred thousand, a million heads, like this. So many Brahmas were there. He felt just like a little mosquito huh? uh, in this assembly of Brahmas. An amazing thing is that all the Brahmas thought that Krishna was in their universe and had called them. They couldn't see. Brahma, our Brahma, he could see. All these Brahmas are there, but each one thought that he's alone with Krishna in his own universe. Hmm? This is amazing. This is, shows that our senses are under the control of Krishna. Hmm? Brahma was able to see them all, but they all saw that I'm alone with Krishna and he's in my my particular universe. Hmm? 
Hmm? They couldn't see. So this means our senses are under the control of Krishna. So what we see, just like sometimes we can't understand what's going on in the fifth canto. And it's totally bewildering because you know, our senses are very limited. Hmm? And they're under the control of Krishna. So he is only allowing us to see whatever we can see. Huh? Just like now they're sending their big uh, web telescope out into outer space and they're saying, oh, now our, oh, everything is wrong. Now we're seeing everything differently. And who knows what they're seeing? Hmm? This material energy is, a, is the illusory energy of the Lord. And we see even a simple uh, karmi, uh, a carnival man, he makes an exhibit. You go inside and suddenly you see you become very short and fat. And then you look at another mirror and you're very skinny and tall. And you look at another mirror, you're double. Hmm? So even the Karmi uh, businessman, he can do things like this. What to speak of the Lord? Who knows what they're seeing? Uh, only what Krishna wants them to see. Uh, so uh, uh, then that Lord Brahma, he wakes up on the lotus flower and it's, it says he looks all around and he hears some uh, he shimmies down the lotus stem and he hears some water beneath him and he climbs back up and then he hears the two words tapa tapa tapasya hmm? so he begins to perform tapasya for a long time and then uh, krishna reveals everything within the heart huh? this is the way we can understand anything in this world is only by uh, krishna's mercy krishna says in bhagavad gita nobody can understand me hmm? Even the great demigods and sages are bewildered. Huh? So what is our chance to understand Krishna? Hmm? We might as well give up, go home. <laughs> no chance. Huh? But Krishna explains, Tesham satata yuktanam bhajatam priti purvagam dadami buddhi yogam tam. If you know Sanskrit, dadami, this is first person. So Krishna says, I give them the intelligence by which they can. So we can only understand Krishna by his mercy. Huh? And where, where does he reveal himself? Bhajatam priti purvakam. Hmm? When we do bhajan, when we worship him with affection, then Krishna, he reveals himself. Huh? Because ultimately, we're, Lord is infinite. We're just describing this, this, uh, in this one universe, there's so many stars and planets and so many things. There's millions of universes. Hmm? Uh, and we're finite. So how will the finite understand the infinite? It's not possible. But the infinite, he's infinite. He can do anything. If finite wants to reveal himself to the finite, he can do it. Who will stop him? Who will stop him? So Krishna can reveal all these things to us within our hearts if we worship with love. So then there's, within the... Uni the, each universe, there's the uh, uh, ocean of milk, and on the ocean of milk, Shirodakshaya Vishnu appears, and he expands into the hearts of all living beings. Hmm? So these are the three Purush avatars. And it's interesting that the first being within the universe uh, is, besides the Lord, is, of course, Lord Brahma who's the most intelligent person in the whole universe. This is complete opposition to the material scientists. Uh, they say that the first living being was a little single-celled creature, that there was some a primordial soup. I don't know if they sell this at your Govindas, but <laughs> there was some primordial soup and somehow some light ray of lightning. And just at that moment, all the elements combined together by accident, and some little one-celled creature appeared. Hmm. And then he was bored being one-celled, so he became two-celled. Then he was bored with that, he became four-celled. Uh, after a while, he, he became, you know, a little fish swimming around the ocean. He said, hey, what's out there out beyond the ocean? So he became, you know, some sort of reptile. He crawled out onto the ground, and then he became birds and this. He, you know, all this by accident, by chance. Hmm. Huh? And then finally, we get to the, the so-called crown jewel of everything, the human being. Hmm? Uh, 
and human being is, and we see problems with the animals, they have no problem, but we've created so many problems. We polluted the earth, we polluted the air, we polluted the water, huh? now we're polluting the vegetables. I was just reading yesterday that you know, many of the things we're eating is, you know, filled with microplastics, huh? especially roots like carrots and potatoes, anything, somehow the plastics don't seem to get past the roots hmm? so much. So we've ruined everything. We're supposed to be the most intelligent, most advanced creature on the planet, but we're uh, creating so many problems. Hmm? Just like they say, uh, overpopulation. Hmm? The problem is that this is just an excuse uh, on their, uh, uh, for their mismanagement. They've mismanaged everything. Uh, and now they say overpopulation. Papa said, as soon as being is there, immediately his sustenance is there. Hmm? And just like uh, our Sridhar Swami, who was the commentator that Mahaprabhu uh, cited most and accepted as the original commentator of Bhagavatam, uh, he was uh, considering, he was realizing that this material world is an uh, illusory place uh, and I want to renounce everything. Uh, but he had a pregnant wife, so he's thinking, what to do, what to do? Then he was sitting one day, and there was a little lizard egg, and it cracked open. As soon as it cracked open, a little fly came down and landed on the egg. Because flies, they like all kinds of nasty things. So this old broken eggshell with some gooey stuff on it. So the fly came, and immediately the little lizard crawled out, and boop! They realized, Krishna's making an arrangement for the, this little lizard. Why he'll not make arrangement for everyone? So then he took sannyas and uh, he's written this wonderful commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam, helping us to get free from illusion that this material world is uh, uh, our actual home. Actual home is beyond this material world. But we're, we're the Prabhupada explains here, Nityabhada, Nityabhada, we're the eternally conditioned souls. Eternally means we cannot trace out. It's a big question, but anyway, uh, if your house is on fire and somebody's yelling, oh, the house is on fire, get out. You think, oh, well, did it start in the basement? Or was something, was there a short circuit adding? You don't try to figure it out. Huh? You just get out of the house. Huh? So we're trying to figure out how we came here. Anyway, don't try to figure it out. You'll never understand. Huh? Huh? Now the opportunity is there. Prabhupada has uh, come to the Western world with a soul and I mean, it's incredible. Huh? We just, we, we passed 70 a couple of years ago, but uh, that's, Prabhupada started out in 70. We can't imagine, you know. Uh, Hari Sorghi was traveling with him. How he just was completely unaffected. I come back from these flights, you know. All right, let me sleep for a few hours. <laughs> how Prabhupada did it, we can't imagine. How, what trouble he took to save us. Huh? It's so amazing. Huh? So Prabhupada is offering, here's the solution. You just, uh, very simple. You chant Hare Krishna, uh, dance in ecstasy, uh, you feast on Krishna Prasadam, you follow these four Vedic principles, and you go back to home, back to Godhead. Hmm? Uh, just like one time I was in Los Angeles, uh, and Prabhupada, uh, he was giving the class, the end of the class, he said, so you just chant 16 rounds, and for, follow these four regular principles, and you will go back home, back to Godhead. I guarantee it. And all the devotees went, ah. and then Prabhupada looked around, he paused, he said, I guarantee it. And everybody went, Jai, see the Prabhupada. Hmm? So one time, disappearance day, somebody from Melbourne was telling a story on the old Melbourne temple. I don't know where it was, but they had this big, tall piazza sign. And Prabhupada was on this big, tall piazza sign. Hmm. And he gave one of those heavy classes that if you have one pinch of material desire, you know, you'll not go back home, back to God. You will stay in this material world. You have to give up all material desires. If you have one pinch, you'll stay here. And all the devotees went, hmm. Hopeless. Then I guess Prabhupada finished the class and he stood up and he saw the hopeless faces of the devotees. <laughs> and Prabhupada took one step down and he looked around and he said, even if you're 90% Krishna conscious, you will go back home, back to Godhead. Hmm? 
<laughs> then he took another step down, the devotee went jai, and the Prabhupada said, even 80%. And then we went, Jai, Prabhupada took another step down, 75%, but no less. <laughs> so our process is guaranteed, and Prabhupada has give, given us a 25% discount. <laughs> so don't worry how you got here, just take advantage. Now you got this golden opportunity. <laughs> and some of you are thinking, oh, you're so fortunate, you got to see Prabhupada and uh, to hear Prabhupada. And, Prabhupada was so beautiful. Nobody who's so phonogenic as Srila Prabhupada. You see all these hundreds. I never get tired. Uh, I have one God brother always sending photos of Prabhupada. I never get tired to see them. On, you know, he's on Facebook. He's always sending me. Messenger, I guess. Uh, so beautiful. And you're all thinking, well, you guys were fortunate. We're so unfortunate. We didn't get to see. You're very fortunate. Don't think like that. Because I have one, I had one God brother named Kartikeya. He's no longer in this world. So he personally narrated this story to me. He won't find it because he's no longer here. So he won't find any memory tape or anything, memories of this pastime. But he personally told me this pastime. Because one time, he was uh, he was Prabhupada's servant, and they went to Hawaii with uh, Gorsundar and Govinda Dasi. So he was cooking for Prabhupada. So one day, Govindadasi brought home some wheat germ. And Kartikeya thought, oh, next time Swamiji, this is old days, Swamiji asks for halava, I'll make it with the wheat germ. And he'll be so pleased, you know. So one day it rained, so it's a little cool. Huh? So Prabhupada, when it's nice, when it's cold, Prabhupada liked halava to make you, it's got ghee and lots of grain, make you nice and uh, uh, warm. So Prabhupada asked for halava. Then he went to the kitchen, he got the wheat germ, he started making it with the, with the uh, wheat germ. And he was just thinking, Swamiji is going to be so pleased. He's really going to like this. This is so healthy. He's really going to like this, you know. That was his whole bhav, you know. And he was a very sensitive, emotional type of person. Hmm? So finally he offered it to the deities. He brought it into Prabhupada. And Prabhupada took one look. What is this? Halava means suji. Suji means cream of wheat. Halava means suji. And then with his left hand, he said, take it out. So Kartikeya was a very emotional type of devotee. So he was destroyed. His whole bhav was, this Swamiji was so pleased. Now he's just rejected what I did, you know. So he went in the temple room and he sat before the picture of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. And he began to pray that I was just trying to please your spiritual son, uh, Swamiji. But somehow he's become so upset with me and he was crying. He didn't know what to do. I said, I don't know what to do. All of a sudden he heard Prabhupada's voice. Kartikeya? Kartikeya? And he came running. Prabhupada said, bring that halava. <laughs> so he brought that halava. Prabhupada with great gusto, he ate everything. He said, bring some more. In this way Prabhupada finished off the whole pot of halava. <laughs> so Kartikeya said, he learned two things from this. One is that Prabhupada is not alone. Because he was praying to who? To Srila Bhakti Siddhanta. Huh? Huh? And uh, so behind Prabhupada, this whole line of spiritual masters, all the way up to the lotus feet of Govardhanadari. Hmm? He's not alone. They're offering us a rope, but they're all pulling. Hmm? Just grab that rope. Hmm? Second thing he learned is Prabhupada said, the uh, grandfather is more merciful than the father. Hmm? Just like we have practical experience in my own life. My grandfather had a store. Nowadays we call it a convenience store, all kinds of different things. So me and my brothers and sisters, we always went to the side where there was chocolates, you know. And my father, who had to pay all the uh, dental bills, he would come, no, 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 no. And my grandfather, from behind the back, he would give us. <laughs> so... You all have Prabhupada as your grandfather's spiritual master. So actually you're more fortunate than us. Prabhupada will be more merciful to you than to us. Hmm? Don't think that you're unfortunate. And this is a village, this is where New Govardhan, this is a village in Govardhan. And uh, what happened was somehow or other Krishna uh, convinced Nanda Baba. He saw Nanda Baba was making some of big arrangements, some big function. Uh, 
So he asks, Baba, Baba, huh? what is this? Is this some uh, traditional thing? Is this something in the scripture? Or what are you doing? Who are you trying to worship? What is the purpose? And Nanda Baba was very busy. And the little boys, they always ask so many questions. So after a while, you just get tired and don't listen anymore. You know? So he just ignored him. And he said, Baba, this is not right. From others, you may keep secrets. But in the family, you shouldn't keep secrets. Huh? Huh? What are you doing, Baba? And so then, all right, this is a sacrifice to Indra. Because Indra supplies the rain. And the rain supply, you know, nourish the grains. And this is how we're living. Uh, and then Krishna said, but the, uh, then he began to preach uh, atheism. The Supreme Personality of Godhead was pre-theism. The rain is falling anyway. It falls in the ocean. What is the need of rain in the ocean? It falls on the rocks. It falls here and there. We just do our work and automatically rain will come. Just like almost every school I've been into in India, the first thing you see, this, this big plaque there says, work is worship, duty is deity. <laughs> And they said, all right, then the ass is the biggest, best worshiper of God. <laughs> Just do our duty and automatically rain will come. You no need to worship. He said, better we worship this Govardhan hill. He's supplying grass for our cows and water and so many things. So Nanda Baba said, okay, Lala, since you're asking, we'll perform a sacrifice for uh, Govardhan. But now let us finish this one. He said, no, Baba, no, Baba, it took so long to gather all those grains and ghee and everything. You have to do it now. You have to do it now, Baba. Come on, Baba. You have to do it now, Baba. Huh? So Baba said, all right. He can't resist Lala's pleading. You know? said, all right, Lala. So he said, now you feed all the Brahmins and the, and the cows, and you make a big sacrifice for Govardhan, and you make, uh, you know, puris, you know, baskets and baskets of puris. First he said, rice. Mountains of rice. Hmm? Just like this is called anakut. Ana, you know, means grain. And kut, like chitrakut. We know Lord Rama went there and stayed for some time. Chitrakut is a mountain. There's another mountain. Trikut with three peaks. Trikut. So kut means mountain. You make mountains of rice with butter on top. Hmm? And uh, baskets, mountains and mountains of baskets of puris cooked in ghee from the cow. And mountains and mountains of Laddus and mountains and mountains, pots and pots of rasgulas and ras and, and gulab jamas, pots and pots of gulab, big mountains. You make mountains and mountains of all these things. All things, especially with made with cow products. So uh, then they offered all this uh, huge uh, uh, amount of uh, boga to Govardhan Hill. And suddenly Govardhan became like a big asan. Uh, and a great big personality uh, appeared there. And Krishna said, just see how Govardhan has appeared to accept all our offerings. Uh, did your Indra ever appear? Hmm? Did your Indra ever appear? Uh, Govind, uh, Jiva Goswami's Gopal Champu, he has all these nice details. Oh, did your Indra ever appear like that? I just see. And Krishna, he bowed down and offered a basis, the, the big Krishna. And Balaram and all the coward men, they all bowed down to that big Krishna. Then he sat down and he looked at all these mountains and mountains of prasad. And he began to eat. And since he's a little boy, he doesn't know what his right hand, what his left hand. He began to eat with so many hands, huh? with right hand and left hand. In fact, if you go to the uh, Janmasthan temple in Mathura, in the ceiling, they show Krishna with, with dozens of right hands and left hands, just bloop, 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 bloop. <laughs> he finished everything off. Then uh, he began to cry, Anior, Anior, give me more, give me more. So that's how this village got its name. And all the villagers said, but everything we have, we offered you, please be satisfied. Anior, Anior, uh, true Brishbasi fashion, you know. If you give a rupee to a Brishbasi, then he'll want ten. If you give ten, he'll want a hundred. If you give a hundred, he'll want, well, now they don't have five hundred. He'll want two thousand. <laughs> uh, 
So just like true Brishvasi, they follow their leader. <laughs> Anior, give me more. Uh, and Nanda Baba said, but Baba, everything we had is offered. We don't have anything else. Please be satisfied. Anior, Anior. The Krishna shrugged his shoulders. Huh? But we don't have anything else. Everything is offered. Be satisfied. Anior, Anior. Huh? So then some Brahmins came and they gave Krishna some nice, tosi, soft, tosi manjaris. Huh? Huh? And Krishna offered them to that big Krishna. He took them. Triptos me, triptos me. Now I'm fully satisfied. If you hear the tape of Prabhupada, you know what full satisfaction is. Now I'm fully satisfied. Huh? And when Lord was fully satisfied, then all of a sudden all that mountains and mountains of rice with butter and all those mountains of baskets of puris and ladus and pots of gulajamans, rascals, everything re manifests, remanifest itself. Mm -hmm. uh, so this village is still there on the side of Govardhan Hill, just uh, after you long, sort of long ways. Uh, uh, after Giskan Govardhan, you go down long and then, you know, first you take the, uh, if you're smart, you take the inside forest path, the beautiful path uh, going down uh, uh, the side of Govardhan. And then eventually you come to village, so the path turns out to the village. That village is Anior. That's where the original, uh, that whole area from Ariskan up to the village is where the Anakut ceremony took place. Hmm? And the village is still known as Anior. So I was very happy today, saw the, the sign Anior Village. <laughs> so, uh, one other comment that Prabhupada was making that everything, uh, so called shortages, is all uh, just like during World War II, they made some shortage of everything. So all the prices would go up, and everybody was hoarding rice. So the uh, poor people, they were starving. Plenty of rice was there. There was rice everywhere. It was in the godowns, but they were uh, uh, hoarding it. And so it's the human beings who create shortage. Krishna has created everything for everyone. There's like the big, they were so cruel. The big shortage in Calcutta, we've read about it, heard about it. It was all artificially created by the British and so many millions of people died. This is all mismanagement. But there's no question of overpopulation. This is a bogus, this is just an excuse for their mismanagement of everything. So we're going to see how my, uh, my trade is going to explain how Krishna has arranged everything for us. Uh, we just mismanage it all. So is there any questions or comments? Everyone fell asleep in my class. <laughs> So if there's no questions, we'll all fall down at the very oh, over here. Yeah. Thank you so much for the class, Prabhu. Very wonderful. Uh, I also heard another story. You might be able to verify for me where it, um, where Prabhupada said this. But I'd also heard that um, similar story to what you were talking about in um, when Prabhupada said you know, he gave the 25% discount. <laughs> yeah. And I'd also heard where Prabhupada. Um, but, and it might be an elaboration of that or it might have been a different time. And then um, at the end, Prabhupada said, don't worry, I have a key, just hang on to my dhoti, I have a key to the back door. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard that. When I was a very young devotee then, because the person who made me a devotee was Bhavananda. So he always used to tell this story that I have the key to the back door, you just hang on to my dhoti and we'll go back to home back to God. So that's our, that's our only hope, actually. We, some people think, I'm a big devotee, I distributed so many books, I did so many Harinams, I collected so much money. We're nothing. <laughs> We're nothing. Our only quality. Just like I can remember in the, the first time I went to the Meyer for Festival in 1974, it was the first really organized one. Uh, and it was so fun because 
It was completely organized. We all flew together on the same plane. We were having, you know, kirtans 30,000 30, feet high. <laughs> the poor pilot was doing it. doesn't show any turbulence, but the plane is bouncing. <laughs> they finally said, please sit down. <laughs> we were having arctic and everything on the plane. And, and some devotees had brought prasadam. They were just out passing a prasadam. Then we got to, you know, Calcutta and buses were there to take us to, to all the buses were arranged. We all went. Now it's everybody does their own thing. But those days it was all organized. <laughs> So, uh, uh, just meditating, and I forgot what I was trying to, I forgot the point I was trying to make. Yeah. Uh, you were talking about what Bhavananda had said to you about the, um, just hang on to my dirty, I have to keep it in the back door. I can't remember what the point I was trying to make. You were saying that the dogs and the Oh, so, so if there was a, actually, we only had the, the, the Lotus building was there, and even that wasn't finished. We were sleeping in the cement dust on the roof, some of us anyway. So a few life members had come. So I guess it's the British way of asking. They would always come up to me and say, and what is your qualification? <laughs> in America, we say, what kind of degree do you have, you know? <laughs> So they said, and what is your qualification? I said, I don't have any qualification. My only qualification is through the problem. <laughs> and that's a fact. It's our only qualification. Hmm? Uh, we get there to the gates, you know, they'll look at our, our record. And somebody will say, well, he's one of Prabhupada's men. Oh, okay, let him go. <laughs> <laughs> Can you can you tell us a bit about the the project in in Kolkata to oh, so, Prabhupada's birth site and to acquire the land there? Somehow there's a very wonderful devotee in Calcutta named Radharaman. This is proof that Prabhupada is giving more mercy to the second generation. He has done incredible services uh, because somehow in India the organization could only have so much land. So there was hundreds and hundreds of different trusts they made. Uh, but to build the TOVP, we needed it all in ISKCON's name. But that meant a, that was a land transfer and there was land transfer tax. So I can't remember, it was like $40 million or something it came to. And so I brought her around with his contacts with Mamta Banerjee, the chief minister. She waived that $40 million. So somehow or other, uh, Somebody from Padiatra found, because they were always looking at Uttadanga. We know that Prabhupada met, met Bhakti Siddhanta in Uttadanga. But he didn't meet him in Uttadanga. He met him in Uttadanga Road. Hmm? So somebody finally figured it out, uh, and they found that place. Hmm? And all around is, you know, slum, and people, the developer just smashing the slums and building, you know, high-rise buildings. Even one developer bought that piece of land where, you know, Uttadanga, the place where Prabhupada met Bhaktivedanta was there. But somehow or other, he finally just, you know, grabbed his feet and said, you have to pay, you, whatever you want, we'll pay, you just give it, you have to give it, you have to give it. And this poor builder is thinking, this sadhu is holding onto my feet, you know. It's all right, all right, you, you buy it. <laughs> so he got that place and they finished it exquisitely. Just all the furniture is exactly that time era. Everything is... Wonderful. Uh, so he managed to get the, play, the place, a uh, little plot where that jackfruit tree is that Prabhupada was born under. Mm -hmm. And we found one letter, it was in Bengali, so not many people knew about it, but Prabhupada had written this letter and signed it, uh, that he wanted a fitting memorial to be built at his birthplace. And they acquired that land and built a memorial. So we have where the, bandit, the jackfruit tree was, but we need to get the surrounding land, the same thing. If, uh, uh, you can see some pictures, you see big, big high-rise buildings are coming up behind the slum, you know, their developers are after this land. So we want to, to uh, uh, get this 
get the surrounding land so we can, you know, small place, we want to build a nice memorial for Srila Prabhupada. Hmm? So, uh, uh, so we have, there's a beautiful video that shows the whole thing. We don't have, I guess we don't have screen here, but anyway, you can, uh, uh, somehow in, in, in Australia we're trying to collect it because it's, it's a big hassle to send uh, foreign foreign contributions to India, so we just do it in one big thing. Not everyone have to go through the hassle. So there's a uh, you can contact Rupa Raghunath. He knows the bank account information, and everything. If you want that to to help build a nice by acquire the land to build a nice memorial for Srila Prabhupada, uh, who's given us everything. He's given us this wonderful Radha Govardhana Dari. They're so beautiful. You're so fortunate to serve these wonderful deities and Giridhari, and Giridhari Dauji, I can't help it. <laughs> they look so much like uh, uh, Jaipur deities. Huh? So we should all uh, try to help. So, Hare Krishna, uh, what uh, Dinabandhu Prabhu said, I'll just add a few points that Srila Prabhupada, uh, his birthplace currently is in a slum area. And um, if you go now, this Radharaman Prabhu who has acquired a very tiny piece of place, like it's a little bigger than this temple hall. So he was able to get that place where the jackfruit tree is included. So, uh, and we were happy with that, that we got that place. But uh, the real thing is that Srila Prabhupada wanted a memorial. And uh, during his last days, in the last year, 1977, he asked Bhakti Chadu Maharaj, to write a letter in Bengali addressing his nephew Sankarshan Prabhu, who is also Srila Prabhupada's disciple, that um, to talk about, he wanted to discuss about that place surrounding that jackfruit area, and he mentioned that if a memorial can be built. So, and he also, Srila Prabhupada mentioned that his health is very bad and he's going to Kashmir for uh, health rejuvenation. A few months after that, of course, we know Srila Prabhupada physically departed from this world. And that instruction, that desire remained uh, untouched. Nobody has worked on it. So the Radharaman Prabhu, you know, somehow uh, by Krishna's mercy, he was able to secure a little bit of land surrounding that jackfruit tree where Srila Prabhupada actually appeared. But um, we were sitting on it and then he realized that surrounding, surrounding the slum area, the area is going to go because the builders, they are after that place. It's a very posh area in Calcutta, South Calcutta, where Srila Prabhupada was born. And if we don't act right now, if we don't do something now, we will lose the land. And our future generations will say that, okay, we could, our you know, forefathers could secure the land for Srila Prabhupada, but they didn't do it. There are a lot many places which are gone. And, uh, you know, this is, we still have, like Prabhu mentioned, Ultadanga. If you go to the place where Prabhupada first met Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, surrounding that place, everywhere there are high-rise buildings. Somehow, particular, that building was untouched by Krishna's mercy. You will see so many pictures of Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur standing in front of that building. We got that place. Now, this is Srila Prabhupada's birthplace and, you know, we owe everything to Srila Prabhupada. If we don't act now, if we just need some money just to secure the land, we can do the memorial later. So, if you can help, whatever you can, like, you know, 10, 15, 20, whatever you can, it's a big money in India. So, we are in need of, like, 800,000 Indian rupees, which converts to how much in Australian dollars, I am not sure. No, 80. 80 lakhs you need. Oh, sorry, 80 lakhs. So, which converts to how much I don't uh, actually know, but whatever you can, anything that you can, it will be used to secure the land surrounding the current place that we have right now. Before coming, uh, before traveling with Dinabandhi Prabhu, I'm from Calcutta, I made a video. Uh, if there is a way, next time we, we, we will show you so that you can see what is the place and why we need it right now. Once we secure the place, okay, we have the land, we can build the memorial slowly, but you know, right now it's an urgency. So that's why we request everybody, so please, whatever you can, anything you can, it is for Srila Prabhupada's birthplace. And also, you know, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he wanted to build the Yogpeet for Mahaprabhu. 
he went door to door begging so we are also begging for our founder acharya shila prabhupada following the footsteps of the previous acharya so please help us you know so that we can build a memorial for shila prabhupada's birthplace this is the dham hari krishna Yes, we have a bank account, one devotee step forward from Sydney. Uh, like you know that you know we also approached Sydney Temple and they did a fundraising, and we collected nearly about uh, 107,000. Mm. Yes, from Sydney, and so one devotee has given his bank account uh, in Sydney in Australia. So I can he share those details with you. Whoever wants to come, we have a bank account in Australia where you can give a donation. Sure, absolutely, and also you can give me the name and details so that you know I can also put that this person is giving this much. I can send a person that this is coming. If somebody is pledging any money, you can give it in some time, like two weeks or something. You can arrange. So anything can be done. It's going to be a very, you know. Yes. we like what sydney did was sydney we were also there in our classes we were trying to create the awareness that this is the project which is uh, also approved by the international gbc that any temple and all temples should help like tobp and we were creating the awareness so sydney temple came up at the last minute with a fundraising event and uh, they just requested devotees to come forward and give whatever they can and that's how they raised like Hundred seven thousand dollars, and if we can also have a similar fundraising event over here, any any amount, whatever you can give. I mean, there is no. I mean, uh, like I said, you know, ten dollars over here is a big money in India. So a little bit added up, we can you know combine together. We can give Calcutta some support because um, they will need help from all over the world to do this. So if we can also host a little bit fundraising events where devotees can come forward, it will be easy to do it in an organized way. So if we can arrange that, it will be nice. If in the temple somewhere, I don't know. I'm just asking, like so that you know all the devotees can come forward, whatever they can, you know, provide. It's for Shri Prabhupada's birthday. So, and if we don't act now. we will lose the place and it is shri prabhu's desire he desired to have the memorial anyway hari krishna to you hari krishna so i was t- discussing with that junior master chari prabhu and we thought maybe this sunday coinciding uh, with the, the program in the bandu prabhu's program on sunday we could have a fundraiser on that day so it gives you a couple of days to think about it and think you know what you can maybe pledge towards this wonderful project So we'll have to discuss with the management what what time that could be, and uh, also this this project is it's a um, authorized ISKCON and GBC project, and uh, as Prabhu was pointing out, wonderful opportunity to uh, save this land so that in the future we can build this wonderful memorial for Shri Prabhu, Shri Prabhu Ki Jai. Also, we have our two books. Brajli the part one and part two that were at that uh, I went whatever the way the prikama went around Braj are I is not chronological but the way the prikama goes we discussed all the different leelas and it's not uh, formal writing but the way I talk that's the way the book is and so Brajli the part one is a little small because we didn't know how we re- receive so that's like fifteen Australian dollars and Brajli the part two is Much bigger. That's 20, or the two together, or 30, and we can go outside here on the benches, and anybody wants a set or one beat, one copy, or whatever, then we can take them. I'm here to sign it also. Hare Krishna. Half of New Goanna community, we'd like to thank Dean Abanda Prabhu for gracing us with his presence and his wonderful class. Look forward to the next classes in the next few days. Dean Abanda Prabhu, Kee.